Lots of YouTubers are quitting or slowing down productions, and 10 times as many are doing monologues on why they think this is happening or trying to find ways to communicate it to normal everyday viewers. If you set aside the YouTube specific details like how to grapple with comment lords and hero worship and platform changes, most of the conversation revolves around the burnout associated with the actual work of production. And in the conversations, about that work, I think too much time is spent on aphoristic truisms like a dream job is still a job without bringing attention to the established books and concepts that philosophers and experts in this space already reference all the time. For example, the hedonic treadmill. I've heard YouTubers talk about how a thousand views used to feel good, but then you keep on chasing bigger and bigger highs. This is a well-documented phenomenon. The hedonic treadmill illustrates that feeling that we all know in theory that even millionaires wish that they had more money and even attractive people go for plastic surgery. If you do some research on the hedonic treadmill and really internalize its potential power over you, not just acknowledge its existence, you'll never find yourself truly thinking, if I could only get a 15% raise this year, then I'll finally be good, whether you're an influencer, a desk jockey, or an artist. Another good concept to look into is Parkinson's Law. This is the notion that work expands to fill the time given to complete it. Middle managers like to quote Parkinson's Law to justify tight deadlines, and YouTubers can use it to anticipate what might happen if they allow their work hours and waking hours to span the same time frame. This next one ages me in the same way that your grandparents age themselves when offering you such business advice as read how to win friends and influence people and then work on your handshake and then you'll have any job you want. But some of y'all haven't read the e-myth and it shows. If you're not gonna read it, at least understand that just because you are self-employed doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur. When I make a video on my main channel, I'm working as a freelancer. I get paid when I ship a project. I didn't make a video all January. There was no AdSense money for a January post. There was no ad read paycheck for the month of January. This is not an entrepreneurial endeavor. There is an amount of leverage at play where my early investments into a library of material does increase the amount of expected pay every time I do post, but unless a business can run without my input, it is one of freelance work. There are more entrepreneurial steps I could take, like hiring writers, editors, thumbnail designers, camera operators, channel managers, Discord moderators, etc., but you do not have to select that route. There's a very hustle-headed mindset pervasive online that suggests passive income is the superior variety, but I tend to think that that's a misleading term invented by people who don't know any better and perpetuated by hucksters who love selling online courses. Again, you can leverage your investments. You can capitalize on upfront costs, be they time, effort, or money. But if you build your worldview around established works like the e-myth instead of online 30-year-olds who wanna show you how to dropship your way to financial freedom, I think you'll be better off. This is the pivotal fork that all YouTubers must face. Do you prioritize artistry and self-expression or business and growth? There are ways to ride that line and get the best of both, but I think it's valuable to at least select one as a priority. If you chose the latter, you do not need me for guidance. There are hundreds of channels dedicated solely to telling people how to grow their channels. I like to watch some videos from time to time, but personally I find them to be largely too okay with stinky practices like deliberately wasting viewers' time to keep engagement high. Still, there are valuable lessons to be learned from that side of YouTube. I don't feel like there's enough good advice for the other guys, though. If you wish to prioritize the artistry without crashing and burning, my honest advice is this. <clears throat> Decide ahead of time when enough is enough. I have enough. I'm so grateful to have attained enough peace and freedom to stop looking at the numbers and stop counting KPIs. Of course, it would be nice to live in a big, impressive house, but peace is much nicer. Really, the only downside is everyone hates Christmas shopping for my little ass when I trained myself out of desire so severely that I struggle to conjure up a wish list. If I may divulge a personal detail, I don't know how much money I will make this year. Not even an estimate. I don't find out how much I made last year until I file my taxes, and even then, the exact answer is somewhat obfuscated by details like, well, your S-Corp, i.e. you as a business, made this much money after expenses, but you can't really touch any of that unless you pay it to you as an employee, and your salary on that end has been the same for three years in a row. Brace yourself for how pseudo-poetic this sounds, but if I truly had to answer the question of how much money do you make, I would earnestly respond, enough, at least for now. 
my baby hasn't picked up any expensive hobbies, and I still live in a country where no family is ever truly safe from losing everything to one medical event. Anyway, here's a wacky truth that I haven't heard described before. When I made that slow climb from zero viewers to hundreds of thousands, I reached this legendary peak of finally good enough to do it full time. And the second that I started doing it full time, the exact moment that I flipped that switch, I was immediately at the lowest trough possible. I was now at the minimum acceptable threshold. I was the least successful full-time YouTuber possible. If at any point I go below that threshold, uh uh-oh, I might be better off going back to the old desk job. But if I did have to return to corporate America for whatever reason, I'd still be doing this. I hope that's made evident by the very existence of this second channel, which makes like 10 bucks a month. I post to get the shower thoughts out of my gourd. I sleep phenomenally when I have a way to offload the things knocking around up here. Birds fly, grass grows, sun shines, and brother, I make little videos. That's put me squarely in the coveted doing what you love category. And if I can give my advice as someone in that position, here's the way I see it. If you wish to become your own boss, Why would you be a jerk boss to yourself? I remember how much I hated doing annual performance reviews. I don't look at my analytics because I don't want to give myself a weekly performance review. I understand most people feel differently, but I really do believe that if you love making stuff and enough people like that stuff to support your lifestyle, it is possible to leave it at that.